Ukraine has information regarding the preparation of two units of North Korean soldiers, specifically two brigades, stated Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky sighed in his nightly address. We have information about the preparation of two units of military personnel from North Korea, potentially even two brigades of 6,000 people each. And this is a challenge. But we know how to respond to this challenge. It's important that our partners do not shy away from this challenge as well. All partners, Zelensky said. He also expressed gratitude to Ukraine's partners who condemned North Korea's involvement in the Russian war. It's clear that in Pyongyang, just like in Moscow, they do not count people and do not value human lives. But we all around the world are equally interested in ending the war, not prolonging it. That is why we must stop Russia and its accomplices together," the president stated. He noted that if North Korea can interfere in the war in Europe, it indicates that there is not enough pressure on this regime. If Russia can still make this war bigger and longer, then everyone in the world who is not helping to force Russia to peace is actually helping Putin to fight. Criminals must be stopped. We expect a strong, substantive reaction from the world. Preferably, not just in words, Zelensky emphasized. Zelensky reacted to the resignation of the country's prosecutor general amid allegations of fake disabilities scam. National Security and Defense Council discussed the situation in Ukraine's prosecution bodies. As a result of this discussion, the prosecutor general of Ukraine, Andriy Kostin, submitted a letter of resignation, Zelensky said in his nightly address. Recently, Kostin publicly resigned days after initiating in-house corruption investigations of his own agency. A statement published by General Prosecutor's Office said the decision to resign came hours after Zelensky held a Security Council meeting to discuss fake disability certificates of officials of state bodies. I consider the position of the President of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky, to be absolutely correct regarding the need not only to annul all unlawful decisions concerning the granting of disabilities, relevant pension payments, and other benefits, but also to implement clear legislative and organizational changes, as well as personal responsibility. This includes political responsibility, Kostin wrote in the resignation statement. The scandal regarding fake disability certificates began last week after Ukrainian journalists claimed nearly 50 prosecutors of western Khmelnytsky region of Ukraine had faked disabilities which enabled them to receive social security benefits. Доповідей головкома Сирського по ситуації на нашому фронті і по перспективах на найближчий час. Зокрема, ми маємо інформацію про підготовку двох підрозділів числа військових з північної Кореї. Може бути навіть дві бригади по 6 тисяч людей, і це, і це виклик. І якщо північна Корея може втручатися у війну в Європі, значить тиску на цей режим точно недостатньо.
І якщо Росія досі може робити цю війну більшою і довшою, значить кожен у світі, хто досі не допомагає примушувати Росію до миру, насправді допомагає Путіну воювати. Russian occupiers are approaching the third stage of their offensive operation in the Kursk region. This was reported on air by Ukrainian defense and security sector expert Oleg Starikov of Channel 24. The first stage was from September the 10th. Then the second stage took place on October the 8th. Now they have had a certain lull and now they will begin the third stage. In the first stage, they occupied certain bridgeheads with their airborne troops, Starikov said. He emphasized that at the second stage, they secured these bridgeheads, Lyubimovka, Zeleny, Shlyak. According to the expert, the Russians' tactics are to cut off Ukrainian troops in the northern bridgehead of the Kursk region in the koronevo zeleny Shlyak direction. And after that, if they succeed, they will go south and try to reach the state border. Therefore, I think that in the third 10 days of October, active military actions will begin and the enemy will begin to push back. Earlier, Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, Oleksandr Sirsky, stated that the situation in Kursk region remains under the control of the Defense Forces of Ukraine. According to him, the enemy failed to seize the initiative here. Meanwhile, military expert Roman Svitan is convinced that Ukraine has managed to achieve one of the goals it pursued in the Kursk region. According to the expert, if the Russians had transferred 50,000 troops from the Kursk region to the Donbass, the occupiers would already be standing near Pavlograd. Some experts say that third stage of Russian attack can also fail. The incursion launched on August the 6th from northern Ukraine into Russia's Kursk region caught Moscow off guard and boosted the morale of Ukrainians exhausted more than two years into Russia's invasion. Kyiv said one of the aims of the offensive, the largest by a foreign army on Russian soil since World War II, was to divert Moscow's forces from fighting in eastern Ukraine. For many Ukrainian soldiers, the Kursk offensive is still a source of pride. Sergei, a soldier just back from Kursk, said the morale and political gains were worth the gamble. Ukraine captured scores of Russian conscripts in the Kursk region who can help Kyiv get its own prisoners of war back. And the Kursk operation, Sergei said, created a beautiful propaganda picture that Ukraine can conquer and conduct offensive operations. The signal was important to Ukraine's exhausted population and servicemen.